So this is that's all I'm saying. Don't everybody? I don't never want to hear niggas Chicago niggas bitches. They can't fight. All they want to do is shoot. Come on, you just think that the folks won barely 160 pounds. Put them bitches on the nigga and his man's blue. What's up with the Rizzle fam? For those of y'all who don't know, NBA Youngboy recently got acquitted of federal charges, which is huge news on its own. You don't really beat those kind of cases, especially if you had the type of criminal history that Youngboy's got under his belt. Instead of taking it easy after all that mess and spending tons of time on house arrest, NBA Youngboy seems to have woken up and chose chaos. I mean, his manager made a tweet saying that he was about to stop in Chicago as the first stop of a tour when he comes out. We already know that isn't a great idea, but Youngboy's just doing what he does. Unfortunately for him, 600 Breezy decided that it really ain't about to go down like that. So did 600 Breezy really threaten Young Boy for performing at Chicago? NBA Young Boy just recently beat a single one of his federal charges. He still has one left to beat, but this is huge. He technically might get off on the other one since it's so unlikely he'd beat either of them in the first place, but we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, these kinds of charges have an extremely high conviction rate. We're talking somewhere around like 97%. What was Young Boy accused of doing that got him in these charges in the first place? Well, it turns out Young Boy had something on him when he shouldn't have. He was picked up in Tarzana after police pulled him over. After searching his car, they realized the young boy had a weapon in the floorboard of his car. A lot of people have pointed out how silly his defense was because he basically just claimed that the car wasn't his and he didn't know that the weapon was in the car in the first place. Young boy had been found guilty on felony charges before, which means he's legally not allowed to carry anything on him. While it might seem like young boy is in a pretty good place right now because he beat the case, he's not out of the woods just yet. Young boy also booked on similar charge in his native state of Louisiana when police decided they were going to pull him over. They tried to get him to stop, but he decided that he's going to live life like his GTA and run from the cops. A whole high-speed chase ended up happening before young boy eventually got out of the car. He jumped out and ran through a nearby neighborhood, where police found him hiding in a random stranger's backyard. To make matters worse, young boy didn't just have a weapon in his car at that time. They found a 45 caliber semi-automatic, a whole bunch of ammo, tens of thousands of dollars worth of cash, and half a million dollars worth of jewelry. Whew. Luckily, he didn't have anything else on him at this point, because if he did, there's a good chance the police would have tried to book him on possession with intent to distribute, or something like that. So since we all know this isn't the end of the story, what else has young boy been up to lately? Well, not a whole lot. He's on house arrest right now. That being said, if he gets off on this second federal case, he's got some big old plans. You already know he's got some music to put out, and he's probably planning a comeback tour since he hasn't been able to get out there and perform for fans in like forever. But where's the first stop? Is it Baton Rouge? Maybe Atlanta, where some of his homies stay? Not exactly. Recently, NBA Youngboy's manager put out a big social media poll asking which cities would you like to see Youngboy do his thing when he gets back out on tour. One fan said anywhere but Chicago. Alex, Youngboy's manager, said, We in that bitch first stop. I don't really need to sit here and tell you why that's a problem, but I'm gonna just so you know how much of a bad choice that would be really be. First of all, after the death of King Von at the hands of Lil' Tim and Quando Rondo's crew, the whole block made some pretty powerful enemies. Including in those enemies are, of course, people like Lil' Tim and Quando Rondo, but also people like NBA Youngboy himself, who's been friends with Quando for a long time. In fact, Quando is signed to his label. Aside from that, the beef that has escalated to an insane point. Pretty much the entire rap game is involved at this point, with tons of different rappers forced to pick a side. There's even been diss tracks passed back and forth, a whole whole video of an entirety of Oblock hanging out and burning 4KT's green flags, and even social media posts that more or less include the whole death threats. I mean, NLE Chopper got attacked in an airport by a crazed young boy fan for crying out loud. Things have more or less cooled down for the last little bit, but people in Chicago still aren't super pleased with NBA young boy. People are pretty divided on whether or not going to Chicago is a good idea for young boy. I mean, first of all, people are sitting around saying that it's perfectly safe because Chicago is pretty big and he could just perform on the whole other side of the city. That's not entirely true though, yo. You can drive through the whole of Chicago in something like an hour from north to south pretty easily. Even if you NBA young boy were trying to perform a show up on the north side, it'd be incredibly easy for some dudes to hop in the interstate or something like that and be at the show in 45 minutes. It's a big city, but it's not crazy big and spread out like somewhere in LA. You can be pretty much anywhere in the city super quick. To make matters worse, there's also the fact that you're not entirely safe wherever you go. Chicago is the third most populated city in the US, so regardless of what's up and where you are, there are tons and tons of people around. With more people in close quarters like that, the more potential for crime there is. Let's go ahead and look back at the case of FBG Duck for a little bit of context into why that's important. People completely thought that the Gold Coast neighborhood of Chicago was safe. It's one of the most 
expensive areas to live in, it's a huge tourist district, and it's where a lot of Chicago's rich people go to shop. It's just a little bit north of downtown area. Instead of being the safest neighborhood in the city for FBG Duck, it turned into the place where he would die. FBG Duck had some ops, namely people from O Block and other black disciples on the south side of Chicago. Since FBG Duck kind of started blowing up, he had some money to throw around. When he got up to the Gold Coast to go shopping, and after a little while he looked outside of the window of the store he was in, he realized that some of his ops were waiting outside, just in front of the store. He walked to some of the employees in the store to ask if he could be hiding out in the back, knowing that they'd get him if he came outside. The people waiting outside knew that he'd have to exit the store eventually though, even if he just hung out until the store closed. Closed. The employee, though, he told him he couldn't go hide in the back. Eventually, he had to walk outside where his ops started popping off shots. The moral of the story is that you're not safe wherever you go, despite the reputation of the part of town you're in has. Even if NBA Youngboy were to do a show in one of the suburbs or something like that, people could still easily get to him. Of course, you could always make the case that NBA Youngboy would have security with him. That may be true, but at the same time, that might not mean anything if they roll up deep enough. Youngboy could definitely disregard his own safety and end up in Chicago as his first stop on the tour if he really wanted to. But, but is for real not a good move. It would look cool, yeah, but Youngboy would look like a real one who stands on his business if he showed up in Chi-Town. But is it worth putting your life at risk just for beef? I mean, Youngboy and Dirk have done a lot of talking back and forth, but at the same time, it's not like Youngboy's actually lost any homies in this beef or anything like that. Nobody's actually slid on Quando, despite the fact that the entire internet wants somebody to. 600 Breezy would seem to agree that Youngboy should stay as far away from Chicago as he can. At least until this whole beef gets shut down somehow. After Youngboy's manager Alex made the post about how they're gonna stop in Chicago first thing, No Jumper made a post pointing out the initial posts. It ended up coming across 600 Breezy's feed and he made how he felt known real quick. He said, Bring them dirty dicky outfit wearing dudes, probably referring to Quando Rondo. A lot of people don't really put too much stock into what 600 Breezy says, just because he isn't really one of the bigger names like Dirk or Lil Reese. That being said, though, he might be more dangerous. Some of the bigger dudes are real hitters like that was the case with Vaughn. Other times, they're just desperate for any little bit of clout they can get. In the case of 600 Breezy, we really don't know. All we know is that the dude drove all the way down to Baton Rouge just for fun, to make a point about how his ops aren't really safe anywhere. People on Twitter were all kinds of over the map on this one. Some people thought Young Boy is really about to slide through Chicago first stop, while others think he's all talk and there's no way he's about to actually do any of that. One fan said, Young Boy ain't going to no damn Chicago, dude. Just doing to get y'all weirdos hype. Youngboy himself hasn't commented on the situation just yet, but that probably means the dude is completely unbothered. There's a pretty good chance that he'll either show up to Chicago first thing once he actually starts his tour, or at the very least, he'll make some kind of Instagram post explaining why exactly he didn't. At the same time, it's kind of weird that his manager spoke for him like that. Either Alex has some faith in the fact that he knows what young boy's thinking or young boy told him to make the post in the first place. But what do y'all think about all this though? Is it actually worth it for young boy to head over to Chicago if he gets off on his federal charges? Is it even likely that young boy is going to beat his second charge in the first place? Let us know what you think down in the comments section below. And if you like this one, go ahead and check out this next video and don't forget to keep it rizzled.